this is easily the weirdest gig I've ever done. I've never done a gig where I can't see people's mouths um, because that is the only indication I have of whether I'm doing a good job or not. So I'm just looking at a sea of half-lit dead eyes. <laughs> if you have a funny laugh, let it out, yeah? If you laugh, the people around you laugh. I think I'm a lot funnier than I actually am. If you've got a snort, you let that shit out of the gate. Yeah. You let it yeah. out. Because a snort to a comedian is like a burp to a chef. It is the highest compliment. <laughs> I, um, am I mentally ill? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I've got, uh, look, I've got plenty of them. First one, I've got generalised anxiety disorder, or GAD, as no one calls it. Um, I also was diagnosed with evolving depression. And it's just, it's just nice to have a doctor who believes in you, you know? <laughs> Like, he had one look at my mental illness and thought, that thing has potential. <laughs> and he was right, it developed uh, at the moment into postnatal depression, which is like regular depression with more responsibility. Because <laughs> if there's one thing you need when you're depressed and sad is pressure to do things. Uh, the other thing I have is irritable bowel syndrome. That's related to my anxiety. Uh, it's the sexiest of all the syndromes. <laughs> And there's two different kinds of, uh, of IBS you can have. You can have the, uh, the backed up one. Don't know why I did that. Um, so you can have the back up, up one, the shy one, uh, or you can have the, the one that is in a hurry. Uh, people get very uncomfortable when you say the D word, when you explicitly, people squirm. They feel very uncomfortable. So I made up a euphemism to make people more comfortable when I'm having an IBS attack. I say that I'm having a closing down sale. <laughs> because everything must go. <laughs> and thank you for the single clap, the loneliest sound <laughs> at a comedy gig. Thank you. Um, so you can call it a closing down sale, you can call it a clearance sale, a uh, fire sale, liquidation. Probably should have opened with that one. <laughs> so I have, I have depression, I have anxiety and I have IBS. I am what doctors refer to as a triple threat <laughs> to myself and the people around me. Uh, I, I recently, um, my, my fella and I recently went on holidays and something very unusual happened, something that's never happened to us before. Uh, we had a nice time. Now, that's no disrespect to him. It's just when you have a mental illness, holidays are something that you do in the unlikely event that they're good. Yeah. It's a real pun. It doesn't make sense to people who don't have mental illness because whenever I'm not travelling well, someone with very good intentions will come up to me and they'll go, you know what, you probably just need a holiday just to get away from it. Bad news, it comes with you. <laughs> like, you can't tell it to stay. Like, I know that depression is called the black dog, but it's not an actual Labrador. <laughs> and I know why that's confusing too, because like, the sun, the sand, the surf, that sounds relaxing, that sounds great. But do you know what's more depressing than being at home underneath the blankets with your own thoughts, just thinking about how you disappoint people? <laughs> Doing it in a bikini. <laughs> oh, so vulnerable, yes. So in the, in the last decade, there's been like a big spike in numbers of depression and also in female alcoholism. And what we do is we treat them separately when actually I think there's a solution in bringing them together. Like what I think is everyone who has depression, because depression is based on low self-esteem, I think everyone who has depression should be given a drunk girl from a nightclub toilet <laughs> because who is more supportive than a drunk girl in a nightclub toilet. <laughs> like, you can be washing your hands, you're there for ages, you think you're by yourself, and then just out of the darkness. You just see it. You're lit. You're just li <laughs> I fucking love your dress. <laughs> And your tits look amazing. <laughs> you know what, if I was a lesbian, I would try to hit on you. <laughs> I might try to hit on you anyway. <laughs> your hair smells pretty. 
Because often when you have depression, you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I can't get out of bed, I'm a piece of shit, I can't get to work. How much better would that be if someone just rolled over next to you and just went, you're not a piece of shit. <laughs> you are what angels see when they look in the mirror. <laughs> And if you don't want to go to work, you don't have to go to work. <laughs> well, you just stay in bed, have a little drinky plinky, be a stalky ex-boyfriends on Facebook. <laughs> you got skin like a bowling alley. <laughs> and it's not like we would have trouble getting volunteers. That would be like the easiest press conference of all time. Just the health minister getting up going, I know that this is a big ask, but do we have any women, any women at all willing to get drunk and give opinions? Do we have any Australian women? Do they even exist? Thank you very much. I have been Felicity Ward. Have a lovely night. Thank you.